Every cruiser's worst nightmare is getting left behind in a cruise port of call and having to watch the cruise ship sail away without you. In this video, I'm gonna share with you the things that you can do to ensure that this never happens to you. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewallcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now I actually had a little bit of anxiety as I was filming that intro. It really is kind of my worst nightmare. Please let me know if it is yours as well. Please let me know in the comments below. Now we've all seen those videos of pure runners or even worse, the people who are really left behind on the port and like sometimes they're crying, they're screaming, they're begging. Oh, it's just awful. Well we all don't want that to happen to us so in this video i'm going to share with you the big and the small things that you can do to make sure it never happens to you sort of the do's and don'ts now before i get started i did want to mention that if you like this video if you find it helpful informative or enjoyable in any way then please do give this video a big thumbs up i really do appreciate it and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already let's get started number one book a cruise line excursion so you have some choices when you do get to a cruise port of call you can go off and explore on your own you can book a private excursion or you can book the cruise line excursion now the nice thing about when you do book the cruise line excursion is they do have a guarantee which is that the cruise ship will not leave without you so even if that excursion is late which has happened to me in the past i've been on a cruise line excursion that has been late the cruise ship waits for you and does not leave without you now of course this doesn't mean you always have to book a cruise line excursion there are definitely other things that you could do especially in certain circumstances to take precautions if you don't go on a cruise line excursion number two know your all aboard time so this is different than the sail away time so your sail away time might be 5 p.m as an example but your all aboard time might be 4 30 p.m so this is really important information to know and what i like to do is actually take a photo or at least take note of the all aboard time as I leave on the gangway. And I do that because that time may have changed from when I first booked my cruise. That does actually happen sometimes. So you just wanna make sure that you double check that before you go off for the day. Number three, if you decide to go off on your own or maybe book an excursion privately, that is absolutely fine. However, you do wanna do some research and there are some excursions that I would absolutely avoid. One of those is anything that is very far away from the cruise terminal. So for instance, if you are going to take an excursion and it's to somewhere that's maybe an hour and a half from the cruise terminal, it really is best off to book that with the cruise line. Likewise, if you're going to take an excursion and it might be maybe an eight or a 10 hour day, you're really cutting it way too close to when the cruise ship is going to leave and you're best off booking that with the cruise line. Number four, consider buying and wearing an inexpensive watch. Now, one of the things that can happen on cruises sometimes is the cruise ship may be at a different time than the island time. So there is cruise ship time and there's island time and sometimes they are the same but sometimes they are different. And so you do want to know that. But something that does happen if you have a smartphone is oftentimes when you turn it on in an island, it'll switch over to the island time. That is not always something good. So just to avoid any of those problems, if you buy an inexpensive like 10 or $20 watch on Amazon or something like that, then at least you do have that watch that you know is on ship's time. Number five, always plan to be back to the cruise ship with ample time before the all aboard time. Now I like to try to be back in the cruise ship vicinity for about two hours before the all aboard time. I will share with you later a few things that you can do near the cruise ship to still not like have to get back on the cruise ship right away and to still be able to enjoy the port. But in this way, you just don't have some of the problems that can actually happen if you get a little bit closer to all aboard time. Now, what can happen is there can be traffic at the end of the day coming back to the cruise ship. We've experienced this before when we were in St. Thomas and it took us only 20 minutes to get over to Megan's Bay. We were there uh, with some other people on the cruise ship and we had gone on our own with a taxi. Well, coming back took us well over an hour. And I can tell you that we were getting very nervous as the time was getting quite close to the all aboard time. Number six, I know this is going to sound like a little bit of a funny one, but know the name of your cruise ship and at which port or pier that you are at. The reason I mentioned this is because we have actually been in sort of a shuttle or a taxi with other people and they actually didn't know which cruise ship they were at. Now we happened to be in Cosmo and there were three 
different piers and leaving it up to the taxi drivers to figure out what cruise ship you should be on and which of the three piers they should drive you to, that just isn't the best idea. Number seven, as you are leaving the cruise ship or even leaving your cruise cabin, pick up one of the daily planners or even screenshot on your cruise line app the information of the cruise port agent. So that is in your port of call, there will be a cruise port agent. And as well, you may have the information even in terms of the contact information for the cruise ship. You wanna have that information in case there is ever anything. If you are running late, if you have a problem, you do wanna have that information just in case. Number eight, three things to have with you just in case. Credit card, cash, and a photocopy of your passport or a photo of your passport that is on your phone or in your email. Those are just the just in case things plus your travel insurance information. You hope that you don't need that, but it is always better to be prepared just in case. Number nine, do your souvenir shopping and really anything else that you think you could do near the cruise port, near the cruise terminal, do that when you do get back to the cruise ship. So usually what I like to do is in those couple of hours that I've come back early is that might be when I go and I get any of my souvenir t-shirts, that might be when I decide to get a drink before we get back on the cruise ship, if that's something that I wanna do. That's really that time that you can do that rather than before your excursion, do that after while you're near the cruise ship. Number 10, don't drink too much in your cruise port of call. Now, of course, no judgment here, and maybe this goes without saying, but you just don't want your judgment to be affected in any way. So if you are gonna have a few drinks, maybe have that a little bit closer to the cruise ship before you get back on, or save your drinking for on the cruise ship. Maybe you even have the beverage package, but you definitely do wanna be careful so that you're sure that you are making it back to the cruise ship before it does leave. Please let me know if you've ever been on a cruise ship where you've actually seen people be left behind or even if you've had any close calls yourself. Please let me know down in the comments below this video. Now, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I would love to have you here within the Lifewell Cruise community. Bye for now and happy cruising.